so the talks are six minutes, um, and uh, we do a little bit of a swap over uh, and see how it all works. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to leave it over to I didn't catch Eve. It. To e Eve. Eve. So, um, who's sitting most of the time at his work when you, you're doing work? Yeah, most of us, right? So, in, in 2012, I bought myself a walking desk. And I said, I want to invest in myself and I don't want to sit down because every time we sit down, we don't move anymore. And I, ever, ever since, since 2012, I'm walking now when I'm coding, when I'm talking, when I'm doing other stuff. So since 2012, I already did uh, 13, uh, sorry, 13 million steps just by walking and, and working. Uh, and when I did it, one of the questions that Joran asked this, this morning when I talked about it is I started in the beginning doing one kilometer an hour, 1.4 kilometer an hour. But now, when, once I'm, I get used to it, after a few weeks, I can actually start to walk a lot faster and I could do two kilometers an hour. And now we are three years later and most of the time I'm walking four kilometers an hour. So I'm just actually walking all the time while I'm doing anything kind of work. So this is actually a lot more movement and interestingly enough, people, sometimes people, I have this when I do boring stuff that I don't like to, to, to do this, then I'll get, I don't know, I'll start to do other stuff. I start to, to, to browse, to do whatever kind of things when I do accountancy. But now when I have a walking desk, I can actually do this for hours without actually yeah, thinking much about it. So I noticed that there is a lot more blood pumping to my brains and I can actually concentrate much longer. And uh, so it, it's actually helping me a lot to, to move. Uh, and I, so I thought this is really good that I would advise people to do this because um, this is, our bodies are not made to be sitting. Yeah? We've been only been sitting, we have sitting jobs for probably around since the Second World War, before most people were sitting and were standing most of the time. But now we all have offices works and we, we, we keep sitting down most of the time where our bodies are not made for it. And so some of the advice, or some of the people say, yes, yes, but now I go to, to the gym and one hour a week or two hours a week I do sport. Who's like that? Who does a little bit? Who's, yeah? So we have a few people say, okay, I do a little bit of sport. That is similar to smoking and saying, but at least one hour a day I'm not smoking, or one hour a week I'm not smoking. Today we would see this is really silly. And that's the same thing. If you would do just one hour of, of, of sports every week, that's really silly. Our bodies are, are, not work, are not working like that. So sitting is really the new smoking. It's really, we're, we have a way that we should move much more. And it's already a lot better when, who has a standing desk? That's already, huh? oh, wow, a lot more than, than just uh, if I asked this about a year ago. So we see a lot of things, but for me that doesn't work anymore. One of the things that I notice is that I go in the evening, I go at home and yeah, I go to my home office and I do just a little thing, yeah? just uh, one thing I want to do. And then you probably recognize this, Three, three hours later, I'm still at my desk. Who recognizes that? Huh? A lot of you, probably. This doesn't happen anymore with me, because when I go to my desk, I don't turn on my walking desk, and I'm just standing there, and after 10 minutes, like, something's wrong. And then I realize, hey, I'm not walking, I'm not moving. So now, I, when I realize that, I can have a conscious decision. Will I just turn it on and start walking again, or do I go back to my family and do whatever family stuff and no, no longer working on my computer? So it also helps me that way. I realize every time that, hey, I, I want to move a little more, I want to, to, uh, yeah, this is, I want to work and then to keep moving. Yeah. Same thing, I'm working a lot of times as, as coaches, so ever since I've done that, I, I realize I want to move a lot more. So one of the things I'm doing if I'm coaching teams or if I'm coaching people, I try to have a coaching conversation together, which helps a lot better. For whatever reason, when we walk together, when we do a walk outside or even in an office building, yeah, we walk and we look in the same direction, which helps to get into the same mindset. Because otherwise, if we're looking just against each other, we sometimes discuss and argue a lot more. So it helps also at that level. And I try to look even more for these kind of things. When, when I go with the train, typically, what I did before is I was going as late as possible to get a train. And I was really annoyed when the trains are not coming on time, which in Belgium happens frequently. Um, I no longer have this because what I do now when I go to a train, to get a train, I start walking in circles, really large circles like here. Yeah? 
And I get very strange looks. People look strange at me, but I don't care. Or at least it took me a few months, but now I don't care anymore. <laughs> But I actually notice that if a train is late, I'm happy because it means I can walk more. Typically, this means I walk around two, 3,000 steps before I get to my office, yeah? which is actually, again, healthy. I would notice I can take my coffee a little longer because I already have a little more energy. Yeah? So I see it at a lot of levels that when, once I get into, into the fact that I'm moving a lot more, it helps me to get way more energy. So this is just my idea that I said, OK, in this lightning talk, let's just try to inspire you a little more to move a lot around a little more. Because we're always in, in a time that uh, we're, we're sitting way more than, than we should. And we should try to see if we can move a little more uh, around uh, just uh, at any times. And you can, you can do that at any places. Every time that you're sitting, you're wa wait, waiting for something, you could just say, well, instead of waiting, I could just move around. I mean, timer is off. Uh, so I, I can just sit down, and, and even today, I just checked before. Um, and in this thing, I did, I'm now at 5,600 steps, which is not much for me because I'm at the conference. And that basically is because I was sitting most of the time. But in this talk, I did a few hundred steps. Thank you very much. I have only got 2,100 steps so far, so yeah. You covered more ground in just that talk than I have today, I think. Um, cool, next up we have uh, Michelle. Um, if we can turn the screen on as well, please. Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, I actually have two talks to give, and I only have six minutes. So we'll have to choose one or the other. So the first one, and I'm going to stand there when I talk about the first one, is about code bashing in the enterprise. So really bad code you can find. And the other one I'd like to talk about is how teenagers today, in their use of technology, force us to have applications that really scale. So I'm going to stand there. You clap, right? <laughs> this was for code bashing. And here. I'm going to flip a coin. It's not going to work. <laughs> so heads is code. It's tails. Right. So teenagers. Who's got teenagers at, at home? Right. So you know the problem. When they're small, uh, so, so these are my kids when they were small. You have a set of challenges. You have like. This one, what do you do? So this hand goes to the, uh, the power outlet, and you can have the choice of being there and slapping the hand. You can't negotiate anything. They don't understand anything. Or you can buy something that gives you security. Let them fail. Let them fail, yeah, right. <laughs> so much later. The two boys are 17 today. No, not today. At this time. And my daughter is 15. So the challenges are different. What are challenges I found? Money. Right. Scott Hanselman once said when he got his first son, he said, I'm going to give him 100% of what he needs and 10% of what he wants. Forget it. The 10% will not work. You will give much more than that. But on the topic of money, I give about enough to survive a month. And if they want more, they're going to have to work. That's one thing. Second challenge, alcohol. So when they are 10 years old, no alcohol. Daddy, can I taste your wine? Yes, when you are 16. A certain day comes when they get 16. <laughs> so uh, when they're 30, you don't have anything to say. When they're 10, you just forbid it. What do you do in between? How do you choose the moment where it's allowed at home? So what I did is when they turned 16, I bought one of these, and I offered it and said, let's drink. And you can drink as much as you like tonight. The first one was tired and went to sleep, and the second one drank one beer with me. But from that point on, 
You could drink beer if it's not school tomorrow, if, it's, uh, if, if the circumstances allow it, but it's not a taboo anymore. And then comes the reason we are all here, technology. You've all seen this pyramid uh, of needs. For teenagers, it's a bit <laughs> higher. There's even one level uh, added to that one. <laughs> but on communication, so with, with uh, their cell phones, do you have any idea what a 17-year-old boy, how many text messages he sends? Throw numbers. 500? A, a day? A month. A hundred? A day. Okay. I'm going to show you a, um, uh, one of the invoices I got. So the invoice looks like that. You have one line per text. It doesn't say what you text it. It says which number you text it and at what time. This is 20 text messages. As you can see, there's only a few minutes between every text, right? This is half a page. It's 50 text messages. And this is a whole page of the invoice with 100 text messages. How many pages did I have? This is a typical month, nothing special. Two pages. Six pages. <laughs> 74 pages. With a bit of first pages for content and, and, and having the right address and so on. But it's about 7,000 messages a month. <laughs> Typical month. Five, five, okay. Right. This is why we have to scale. And I hope that's not true for my son, because if, if he sends more, uh, uh, what is it again? More snaps than texts, our internet connection is broken. So. Okay, my time's out. Thank you very much. I don't think I've sent that many text messages in my life. That's ridiculous. Ah, kids these days. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm afraid you get me giving a talk now as well, because that's happened. Um, uh, uh, and so, hi. Uh, I am Phil Nash. I'm a developer evangelist for Twilio. I've also MC conferences on occasion, uh, which is a lot of fun. Uh, before I get going, I need a volunteer from the front row. Somebody, there we go. And you're going to have to hold this. Don't check my email. Do not play Candy Crush. It's not on there, so it's fine. It's a safe demo uh, thing. Um, oh, what's your name? What's your name? Dan. Dan. That's very nice and easy. Thank you very much. <laughs> OK, cool. So what I want to talk about uh, is not Ruby. Um, but this is a Ruby and Rails and web converse, uh, conference. So I want to talk a little bit about WebRTC. Uh, who knows what WebRTC is? Few hands, cool. For anybody who doesn't know, it is peer-to-peer um, -peer video, audio, and data in the browser. Uh, it is available uh, in most of our modern browsers. It even dropped into uh, Internet Explorer, oh, sorry, Microsoft Edge uh, very recently. Um, and uh, uh, so it's quite magical um, because you can build it in the browser. Its problem is it's an absolute pain to build into the browser. And it talks about awkward constructs like ICE candidates and SDP and things like that, things we don't care about when we want to make a video conversation between two people. So I want to uh, show you a little bit of what uh, Twilio can do with this. And I want to build a live video chat uh, right here, right now. I hope that's OK. So we start with some HTML. Can you read that? That's, I'll make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, and I'm just going to add two uh, divs onto this page. One is Phil, that's me. Uh, the other is uh, Dan. I'm just going to say Dan. That's over there. That's our, that's our little lap, um, uh, tablet down there. And then I'm just going to throw a script onto the page with uh, the Twilio JavaScript in it. And then we're going to start writing uh, some JavaScript. Cool. So the first thing we do uh, with this is get ourselves an access token. This is something we probably would do in Ruby, but I don't have the time for right now. So I'm going to cheat by going to our testing tools and generating myself an access token. This saves you leaving your, uh, your usable credentials out on the, uh, in the browser, because that's pointless. Uh, and you'll get lots of people spending lots of money on your account. It's a terrible idea. And once we have that, um, we can make ourselves uh, an endpoint. Um, and this is basically an address in the system that will allow us to call uh, each other. And when you do get called on that uh, endpoint, you get an invitation event happen. Uh, and with that invitation event, you can accept it, which is quite nice. Uh, I'm going to accept it, because uh, 
I know we haven't only just met, Dan, but I like you. Uh, so let's accept that. Uh, if you've been doing with any uh, new JavaScript kind of stuff, then uh, that returns a promise. So we can just write then uh, and get a promise back, and that comes with an invite. That comes with a conversation. Um, and that's much nicer, like I said, than having to deal with uh, awkward things like ice candidates. This is just a conversation between two people. So with that conversation, uh, I get my local uh, media and attach it uh, to my div that I made earlier, fill. Good. Uh, and that conversation also can listen for uh, participants to be connected. Uh, that's a long uh, event name, you'll notice. And if you misspell an event name, you don't get errors. Uh, because they just don't happen. <laughs> so that says participant connected, right? <laughs> Good. When we get that participant uh, from that event, uh, we can get their media and attach it. This is your media, Dan. Uh, we'll attach it to Dan. Good. And the only other thing I have to make this uh, endpoint do is to listen for those invitations. Great. Um, so that's my side. This is going to run on my browser. Uh, this is currently running on the uh, other browser over there. Um, in that uh, Nexus 7. So I generated an access token earlier because you've seen me do that uh, and you don't need to see me do it again. Uh, and then on this side, I'm going to create a conversation between uh, me and Dan. So I'm going to call, because it's from you, I'm going to call Phil. And that also returns a promise, uh, which, and this stuff is going to start to look the same because we get a conversation from that. And with that conversation, we get the local media and attach it. And the local media, in this case, is uh, on your machine. So we're going to attach it to you. Uh, and then that conversation will also listen for participants. Uh, there is a Sublime Text plugin, which allows you to complete from other tabs, but I don't have it. So I had to do all that <laughs> typing again. Um, cool. And I'll get that participant. And from that participant, I will uh, get the media and attach it, because this is me calling in from the other side. Uh, cool. All right. And that endpoint doesn't need to listen, because it's making the conversation. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go ahead and refresh my side of the page, which is blank. Uh, and then I'm going to pray to the Wi-Fi gods, because that really is the only killer here. And Dan, if you could refresh the page in Chrome there. And what you should see appear at the bottom of the screen is a thing asking for access to your video and your microphone. And if you accept that, uh, then I should get uh, an invitation that comes up and asks for access to my video and my camera, my camera and my audio. And if I accept that, I turn up on screen, and then Dan turns on screen as well. And that is <laughs> And if you're interested in that kind of thing, um, come and talk to me uh, about Twilio and things we can do with communications in your applications. Uh, my name is Sean Ash. I'm a developer evangelist for Twilio, and it's been an absolute pleasure to spend six minutes talking to you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Christophe. I, I just want to, to present you uh, an association that we have founded uh, this year, which is Ruby Belgium, and uh, give you, explain you a little bit about that. So why an association? So I realized that it was important to promote Ruby, but not only that, uh, also to help my fellow Rubyists, Belgium ones. And I think it's more about people than technology, that's why an association was important. So, of course, uh, initiatives like Race Girls is very important, but what you want to help people is to get jobs, and you want companies to find Ruby, good Ruby developers in the country because it's the way to promote the community in itself. So, who is behind that? Um, I, I am, uh, but you will find people uh, that organize Arkham there like Euron, Rana, Anes, and uh, Yannick. So if you have questions about the association, just come to us, ask us what you can do to help the association. Uh, I will tell a little bit more about that. So how? We have a couple, a few events. So the first one is uh, Bruch, which is the Belgian Ruby user group um, that we're running once a month for now in Brussels. If you are interested in, to, in, in running your, the, the, a local chapter in your, 
in your city, like in Kien, in Bruch, Antwerpen, or Liège, or Namur, uh, just come talk to me and uh, I explain to you what you can do. So that's, that's the Twitter account if you are interested in following uh, the meetup we are organizing. Basically, it's an hack evening where you can find help or just some time to code on your own project, even professional ones. And if you need the help, it's a good place to, to find it. Um, then you have Ruby Burgers. Uh, it was started by Yannick. It's an informal meeting where you just meet with other Rubyists around a table. And it's a really good place to meet each other and make the community better. Uh, that's the Twitter handle. We try to do it once a month. We don't talk necessarily about Ruby, but we enjoy the, the burgers and after that, beers. Um, then you have uh, Rails Girls Brussels, which is organized by uh, Oana, usually. We are looking for someone to lead uh, the chapter, so if you are interested in, uh, in running the, the next one, please come to talk to Oana. It's very important to continue to promote Ruby and, uh, and bring more people into uh, the community, especially uh, women. Then you have a Rubicam, which is a, a new event. Uh, we, we did a one in the end of August. Basically, we meet during a, a whole weekend and we do stuff together. Uh, there will be probably one in winter. Uh, again, if you have any questions, just come talk to us. Um, then we have a chat room where I think we have more than 50 persons uh, meeting there quite every day. Uh, if you have questions, if you are interested in uh, any events, that's a good place to, to meet other uh, Rubyists. So it's rubyburgers.erokuapp.com. And then you have jobs. Uh, I will give uh, explain a little bit more about that after. And Arkham. We don't actually support Arkham, but we would like in the future, and the way to do that is to increase our finance capabilities, and it's notably based on what you can do for us, or just by participating uh, to the events. So for jobs, uh, we have a GitHub repositories where we list all the companies doing Ruby, uh, you can promote yourself by pinging brook underscore b on Twitter or coming on the, the Slack room. Uh, if you have an open position in your company, do, do the same, and it will be the, the best to share uh, jobs in Belgium. Uh, for instance, the job boards, uh, it's a, an example what we can do in, in the community, and I heard that recently a couple of uh, reviews found our jobs thanks to uh, the, the Ruby Belgium Association. So what can you do? Uh, you can follow us, you can become a member, there's a small fee of 25 euros for now uh, that we will use in order to, for operations and so on. You can participate to the events and you can just talk to us and ask yet what you can do to help the association. Um, for instance, you can maybe help us to design a logo if you are a good designer, because if you don't do that, we maybe end with that. <laughs> so, just bring a lot of love. If you have questions, there's the email and all the Twitter handles. And uh, I hope we will together grow the, community, the Ruby community in Belgium. Thanks. <laughs>